Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today I received this thermal camera. It is the HT02D. Um, it is a, uh, uh, let's just call it low range um, camera, 32 by 32 thermal pixels. Um, this uh, cost me around 100 euros, so that's roughly also 100 uh, US dollar. Um, I was looking at some of the smaller do-it-yourself modules that you can get for around maybe half that price, but those are only 8x8 eight eight, uh, thermal pixels. If you look at the models ranging higher than this, you are suddenly jumping up maybe fourfold in price, but you are also getting um, uh, a pixel count that is maybe yeah, 8 to 10 times uh, higher. But the price also comes with that. So let's get this uh, unboxed and see what it ca can do. The box itself has a nice uh, feeling to it. So graphics are actually a quality. Um, that's always a good sign that if a, they spend a little money on the packaging, the product might as well be good. Comes in a half pouch, has some sturdiness to it. So let's see what's inside. Here we have it. Just comes in a welded sealed plastic bag. Nice soft inner <laughs> padding here in the pouch. So let's see, temperature range minus 20 degrees Celsius to 300 degrees Celsius. Let's see, manual iron red to rainbow. Uh, what I did read about this is that this has problems with showing the hardest as red instead of going over in the white as normally seen. You can also see the uh, capturing frequencies is 6 Hz and that is quite normal due to the um, export restrictions uh, due to yeah, thermal uh, imaging hardware being used in uh, weapons. So if you ha have anything higher than 6 Hz it's export restricted. Some about the color palette, uh, okay, focal distance. This product is fixed focal thermal imaging camera. The applicable distance is 50 centimeters. Now that's quite interesting. Um, so I'm wondering if this can even be used on something like a building or if it's purely for yeah half, half a meter uh, distance. Let's see here. Uh, seems to be about that, but if we look at the box itself, it also does... Well, that picture does seem to be uh, further away, but all the others are within that distance. So, batteries go in where? Isn't the overall feeling quality of this? It's it's pretty lightweight. That's not much there. And here you have the thermal camera and the regular camera and a LED diode. This is the imaging trigger. It's a lot screen. How about that knob feel? Mm. Nice uh, rubber buttons. That seems quite good. But you can hear you just have your regular tactile uh, mini push buttons like this uh, sitting underneath. So let's uh, get some batteries in this and uh, fire it up. So batteries should just be sliding off here. Yep, just like that. Takes four AA batteries. OK, 
Okay, that's a pretty tight fit. Thermal imager. So it starts to boot up now. And I don't know if you can see the screen that's pretty hard in this light. Let's see if I put my hand underneath here. Let's see that tracks to uh, 31 degrees Celsius. Let's find uh, some electronics to test this on. To test the thermal camera, I have set up the small 150 watt induction heater here. I have a small workpiece. Voltage over here, we have a current here, uh, and the camera here. So let's just try to turn this on. So it goes up to the 1.3 uh, idle current. And we might as well just. Oh, we see that the work coil immediately uh, heats up. So that's a maximum of 42, 43. That's, of course, just keeps rising. And as we can see, the, the scene just gets uh, darker and darker now as the work coil uh, takes up all the uh, yeah, bandwidth of the image. So let's just try to insert the workload. We can see the current down here in the uh, corner rising to uh, 7 amps. We should see... Ah, I just have a little water inside the, um, the workpiece that started to boil there. So 200 degrees, not far from uh, maxing out now. Yep, over range. So if I remove the workpiece, it immediately drops down and we see the work coil temperature 120 degrees. That's not that bad for uh, just having a 300 plus degree uh, workpiece sitting in there. But we also see the temperature is not dropping when it's uh, running idle here, it's actually still going up, so that's not dissipating enough heat. So let's uh, just turn that off and inspect the power electronics of it. So if instead we just look at the board here, we can see that we have a maximum temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. But that is, at most you can see the PCB uh, connections where the uh, work coil is connected. If we try to turn it around and look at the capacitors. We can see that they are actually not that bad, just around 30 degrees Celsius. So with a bit longer on time uh, or run time it might get harder. So. I'll give it a couple of minutes of runtime and then we'll see what temperature it has. After a couple of minutes of uh, runtime and uh, heating up the uh, workpiece to uh, red hot glowing, we can now see that the resonant capacitors at the, the bottom of the induction heater is up to uh, 80 degrees Celsius. The work coil around 200 degrees. It's actually taking, you can also see that uh, there's uh, some discoloration um, at the middle of the coil here. Now the inductors are not showing up uh, that, um, that warm. If we turn it around here. See, it's actually not the uh, resonant capacitors that's uh, heating up. 
it is the PCB tracks. It is the whole uh, PCB itself that is uh, heating up and along with the inductors you can see here. Outside of my house in the garden you can see the windows over here. This is just my finger. It's actually pitch dark. Here in January we got about 2 degrees Celsius uh, outside. Um, and if we look at the thermal camera here we can see that the Focal length uh, is uh, the half meter is pretty, uh, but at, at least we can see the contours of the house. That's pretty accurate, and we can see the windows and a chimney just uh, sticking up there. But any really good detail on a distance like this to see the the whole house, uh, it's not something this camera has. Uh, but the uh, temperature at around zero degrees and a maximum of three that's pretty um, pretty accurate but the minimum of minus 40 that's uh, way off so let's uh, move a little closer to the house and see if we can get some better detail here we are at a distance about half a meter from a window corner um, and if we check the camera here like this also here some fireworks in the background despite it is the 5th of January while filming this. But as we can see the camera overlay does not help much uh, when there is no light. But the temperature, again, I do not have uh, anything to check with right now. But that is also not, it's not that good this is. So uh, let's uh, move inside and see if we, if we can find some uh, cold spots. Here I have a door in my basement. Ambient temperature is around 21 degrees. Uh, I know the handle of that door is notoriously colder than the uh, door panels. So let's just see what it says here. As we can see, the door panels are 18.6 degrees Celsius. And it finds a minimum temperature of 15 degrees. So if you point that at the handle, we can see it starts dropping. So that's quite good. Here we have some of my house's uh, central heating system. Um, as we can see, there is a bit of uh, exposed pipe here and the rest is really isolated. And this is the return water, so that is cooler than the uh, yeah, feed-in water here. So let's just see what we can get up here. So as we can see here, we have above 50 degrees Celsius on that piece. And that little valve sitting over there, that's only 33, because that has a bit of insulation around it, but that is completely exposed. The thermal camera have now been tested on some electronics, some uh, parts of my house, some heating system, some electronics. Um, and how does this compare to having, for example, a regular point and click infrared uh, thermometer? Uh, well, this cost about one third of what this costs. And this actually has a lower um, temperature range. This only goes up to 260 uh, degrees Celsius. So I do recommend spend that extra money and get this. Despite the low resolution of both the thermal um, sensor and also the images itself, it is a pretty good result um, after all compared to what you pay for it and how many measurements you would have to make with a um, infrared uh, thermometer. Up our left uh, corner here we can see the induction heater. Um, there is a little uh, offset between the overlay over the camera, but that seems to be exactly the distance between the uh, the sensor and the camera. So if you align up uh, differently, uh, the overlay might fit better than at other angles. Um, and the, the fourth uh, picture is the server power supply powering the induction heater. 
Now in the right column of pictures uh, there is the door in my basement. There is in the middle a picture of my uh, smartphone um, that I have been using to film the um, thermal camera with. And then we have the house heating system at the bottom. Now bottom left we have the most awesome woman in the world, the one that keeps up with all my electronics and high voltage and stuff and also a picture of her laptop. So it can also do okay detailed uh, pictures um, when you use the overlay, but generally you should have um, enough light to have the overlay um, be shown uh, probably. Uh, if, the, if it's used too dark, as you can see on the video from outside the house, um, all details just disappear and you have no reference frame um, for the temperature um, yeah, heat mapping. So I do recommend uh, getting this. Uh, if you look on their official website, it is uh, set for um, two hundred dollars, but I did get it off eBay at a uh, hundred dollars, so it is worth shopping around to find it. So until next time, see ya.